I'm Ada Koch. I'm a painter and an art teacher. Um, I've also done some multimedia visual art and even gotten into 3D sculpture sometimes. I do art of all different subjects. I'll do portraits, landscapes. I've gotten into a lot of public art recently, even did Art in the Loop, which is on the streetcar downtown in Kansas City. And I've done some sculptures at the World War I Museum. So you name it, I'll try it. So my art is very layered, not only um, physically and how it's made, but meanings behind things. So a lot of my art um, got pieces of paper that reflect the area that I've gone to. So tickets or train passes or maps. Now, once things used to be on paper, <laughs> now everything's on our phone. But So I incorporate these papers and then layers of paint and and have this feeling that's built up and there's motion but there's also a lot of meaning especially in some of my art that's got messages for the community um, there's history I have paintings in the background of historical war scenes and then on top of that young kids playing so um, my art is Hopefully, people will come up to the art, see it from afar, be interested, be drawn in, and then be rewarded with much more once they get up close. So, for this show, which is really exciting, I'm doing some landscapes, which are mixed media on canvases and it's layers of acrylics and papers and graphite uh, to get the feeling of, actually in this case, grease. I love the ocean very much and Greece is all about these beautiful idyllic islands just settled in the blue sea and there's all different colors of blue there. There's the azure blue, there's the deep blue, depending if a storm is coming, I love blue. And then the white buildings and then the bright spots of color from flowers. So for an artist, it just is a little of everything that I want to do. I have never been to Greece and so this is a place I want to go but because of COVID I haven't been able to travel so one of my girlfriends went to Greece and I begged her to let me have her photos when she got back so I could imagine myself being there and feeling those breezes and seeing that blue sky and blue ocean so now I've got to go. Of course. <laughs> I'd love to go to Portugal, Spain, never been to Germany, um, and then Asian countries, China, Japan, uh, those would be fabulous. My most exotic show I was ever in was in Florence, Italy, and I've been out there twice for a Biennale. And that was fun. The problem is getting your art there and then back again, so. <laughs> but all worth it just to have that experience. My background is not in art. I wanted to go to art school, but my parents were both scientists and kind of didn't make that an option. I didn't know better, so I said, okay. So I went to college and got a business and chemistry degree and then ended up selling computers for Hewlett Packard for years back in the old days. And, um, but I always kept taking art classes in the evenings and wanting to learn more about it. And finally after I had three kids, 
it was just too hard to go back to a full-time job, so I started really putting myself into my painting and loved it and started teaching and started selling. And now I teach all over the country. I teach, uh, probably the furthest away is Tucson, which is really fun. I go there and teach some classes in the winter. Here I teach at the Nelson Atkins Museum, teach at my studio, um, taught at schools. And then I started getting into activism art too, things that are going on in the community that really affect me, like violence, gun violence. Um, just can't ignore these really sad things going on. So I've gotten involved with some groups that work with people who've lost members of their family to gun violence. And um, I've used my art to gain awareness and help them raise money for their causes. So that's been good. And that's kind of what got me involved with the World War I Museum too. And for that, I did these giant metal poppies, anywhere from 12 inches to 24 inches, two feet across, and we filled the reflecting pool in front of the World War I Museum with 118 of those to represent 118,000 Americans who died in World War I. And that was fabulous. And it was a temporary exhibit up for six months, and then they sold those as a fundraiser for World War I. Uh, at a thousand dollars each and I think they're all sold now so that was a really good fundraiser for them and a wonderful project for me. Ah, oh, everyone gets stuck. <laughs> um, I just keep working. I will go talk to other artists I will go to an art museum, I will pull out some old art books, I have a zillion art books, and not be afraid to just let my mind wander and start something totally new. Um, not every piece is going to be a masterpiece, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, sometimes you just start messing around and it turns out to be something great, or not, let it go and start something else. But if you're at the studio every day, which is key, then you're just gonna make work. I think a lot of times young new artists feel like they need to just have this inspiration that's gonna pull them to great fame and it's a job and you need to show up at your studio or your office or wherever you're working every day and work and work and work and that's how you're going to get art made, it's going to how you're going to get contacts in the art world and really find your niche because I think sometimes we start off doing a certain thing and, and then let ourselves be transported into what really works.